Hi, I'm Alicia Daitner from Team Sprout, and I'm excited to introduce the See Social Differently podcast, Sprout's exclusive podcast series where we talk about, wait for it, seeing social differently and how that can have an immediate and major impact on your brand or business. We'll be pulling back the curtain on how Sprout approaches social and talking to thought leaders in the field about how they see social differently for their own business. We know navigating the social space can be overwhelming, so here's how we're beginning the conversation, by bringing you strategic insights, useful tactics, and valuable thought leadership. That basically means I'll be talking to people who know what they're doing in social. Today, one of those people is Kristen Johnson, our Vice President of Content and Communication at Sprout Social. Hey, Kristen. Hey, how's it going? You do know what you're doing, um, and especially around one of the hottest topics on the block right now, annual planning. But before we get into the business side of social, I have to know what social media platform has the greatest impact on your personal life? Oh, goodness. Um, well, I actually uh, am actually redecorating right now. So Pinterest is my social network of choice. Love it. Um, and I have been pinning as much as cottage core. Is that what they call it? Uh, as possible. Cottage core. Is that... So is it, it cottage core? Isn't that what Taylor Swift loves? Oh, okay. Know. Like cozy. This is where I need. Yes. Yep. Yes. Got it. Okay. Cozy vibes. Fantastic. Um, this pairs nicely with my, the platform that's having the greatest impact on my personal life, which is Facebook Marketplace. A long time Craigslister. I love that Marketplace lets me buy and sell things but actually see that there's a human behind it before I go into someone's basement to buy a bookshelf, which I have done. That is a topic for another podcast at another time. Yeah, I am definitely subscribing. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to business. Um, it is Q4, and that means it's planning season or season, S-Z-N, as we see on social feeds. And the question I have for you is pretty big, but we're going to do our best to chip away at it. And that is, how do you use social insights in planning? And maybe before you dive into that, tell us the quickest version of your role and why we're even talking about using social insights in planning with you. Okay, cool. So uh, I am the VP of Content and Communications at Sprout, and so that means I oversee PR, social content, internal comms, um, and most recently events, your team. So um, that is my quick and dirty role. Uh, I basically am in charge of awareness and perception. So I am a huge, honestly, planning season is my favorite season. It gives us all a chance to take a step back, think about not just what we want to do, but what's been working up until now and what do we want to stop doing. Um, and so... I, I don't start the season, if you will, by asking for a bunch of reports from social. That's not really the approach. Instead, it's about uh, kind of understanding those insights from social and all of the data from social on an organic and consistent basis. Um, our social team and I are constantly communicating about what's working, what our audience wants, um, so that when I go into planning season, I already have that knowledge, and not just I, but everybody across the organization has that knowledge so that we can use that as the foundation for our planning. I love that. And I know that you work closely with the social team. They're sort of under your line of management. Was this an yeah. organic partnership with the sharing of insights across the year, or is this something that you started intentionally doing or tell me a little bit about how you got to where you are with that relationship. Um, it's probably a little bit of both. It's definitely organic in that it's a constant communication about what's working. That's important. Um, but I also think that we have to be intentional about the ways that we share that information and having a consistent cadence and ensuring that the insights we're sharing are actionable. Um, because that's what makes them really useful and that people actually read those insights and just those insights um, and can plan, can plan and learn from them. So we send out 
newsletters. It's a uh, constant kind of email communication around, hey, here's a here's a strategy that we employed that, and this is what's working and what's not. This is a trend that we're seeing within our audience or within the broader social landscape that we can really see an opportunity for us to play into, all of that. I love that. Do you also have ways that you share those insights inside Sprout? It's not just sharing with me. If it shares with me, it might, it could easily die in the vine. But instead, how are we sharing that with the rest of marketing, with sales, with product? It's like an ongoing communication. Um, and so I find that our two platforms that we share the most via are email. So taking all of the insights that we get within Sprout and making sure that we can easily share those across the organization, um, as well as within Slack. We do a ton of like quick updates. Um, so that people can have a constant pulse on what's happening on social. Yes. Uh, I think I'm even part of some of those channels that were designed specifically so that people across the org could, I mean, it's one big cycle. We are looking at, we're looking at social insights. We're taking them to inform our work. We're using them to inform our clients' work. Like it really is truly a cycle. And that's why this podcast is so ambitious for us to try and explain that um, in a short amount of time. But it sounds like the difference isn't just in the info these insights provide, but how they really reposition a business's entire approach. Um, Again, this sounds like an obvious answer, but just, you know, humor me here. This increases impact. Yes. Am I am I seeing this right? 100 percent. I think that and to take it back to planning, but really just in general, a lot of businesses think what what does our business need? What is our revenue goal? What is our marketing goal? And kind of starting from there. And obviously, that's a really good place to start. You need to hit your goals. But those goals are meaningless if they don't also take your audience insights and the larger market trends into, into account from the very beginning. And so it, the magic is really when those t- two things overlap. Um, and social is what's giving you those audience, those market insights. Um, it's helping you kind of have a crystal ball of what might be coming down the pipeline that you can adjust for now. Um, and so I think that's really important and that's what's going to give you the, the secret sauce. I love secrets. And I think at Sprout, like inside the Sprout house, um, we know that social data matters. It's what we live and breathe every day. Our community knows that, um, do you feel like people understand what social data is the way that Sprout defines it? Um, well, dep- I mean, people is a big, pretty big term. So some sure. people, yes. Like, I think what's really important, though, is people often think about social data as performance data. So this strategy worked, this one didn't. This messaging works, this one didn't, which, which is great. Um, but it's also understanding deeper audience insights, understanding what aspect of your audience is this is really resonating with, um, which, which aspect of your audience is the most apt to engage with you and how can you utilize that? And then also like further trends. And that, that's when you bring in like the crystal ball. And that's when I'm thinking about it's not just about your brand. It's not just about your strategies, but rather what is happening in the broader marketplace that you can tap into. Um, what's coming down the pipeline, what are people just like at the cusp of talking about that you can get into that conversation and that's when your brand really starts to see more traction. That sounds exactly like what somebody in a CMO role or another C-suite role that really wants that vision. Um, I know that our social media managers do this day in and day out. So they are dialed in. Um, I feel like that's an old, old timey statement, but I'll say it. Um, They're dialed in on what social data means, but I would love to hear your perspective being in a leadership role and working directly with Sprout's senior leadership. Why should senior leaders be asking social teams to do social listening and incorporate that into planning? So the th- truth is, is that the concept of like annual planning is really difficult at this point because the speed of social and that's really where all of these conversations are happening. And that's where people are kind of determining what's next. Uh, mm-hmm. That's happening so quickly that things can get really outdated really quickly. 
And so you can plan for eight months down the line, but if the conversation on social shifts, that's not going to feel relevant anymore. And the impact of your initiatives are really going to fall flat. And so it's making sure that you have this constant pulse on what the audience is saying, what the broader marketplace is saying, what trends are happening. And when you do that, you can quickly pivot. You can make you can really actually be agile, which is what everybody wants to be right now. Um, and it, you need to have that constant communication with your social team to understand what's happening on social and integrate that into your plans from the very beginning as well as ongoing. I feel like this is like a personal TED talk for the way that I'm thinking about my own small segment of annual planning, which is to be focused and be really clear about what I want to achieve in the next year, but also hold that agility and hold that flexibility at the same time because we work in a pretty dynamic industry and there's a dynamic news cycle and there's so many things that we have to take into account. So that resonates where a plan made in October of one year, it would be impossible to hit it to the letter the entire next year. So exactly. Especially in our current, sorry to interrupt, but especially in our current landscape, when I think about even like, let's say digital events, Right now, like if we're going to start planning for a digital event in a few months, we need to look at what's happening on social. What is the conversation around digital events? Are people totally over them? Do we see some like moderate sentiment? Are things kind of on a downslope? If so, we need to pivot that and think about something else or kind of change the way that we're approaching it and then make sure that we're constantly keeping up on that so that as our as the sentiment changes, we're also playing changing our plans to adjust to that. Oh, you are speaking my language. I <laughs> definitely know the uh, the thrills, the roller coaster, the ride of trying to predict the future for events um, and digital events. And it has really been an exciting but uh, very challenging time to stay ahead of the curve um, and ride, ride the wave. How many other phrases can I drop in yeah. there? Um, There's at least 50 others, so. I'm going to put you on the spot and don't hate me, but if you could, I want to give people who are listening today, I want to give them like a little something, a little secret that they can take back to their teams. What is one question that leaders can ask their social media managers to help understand what social media managers are seeing and really help them get informed? Like what is a, what is like the one thing that you think they could ask to have a greater impact on their planning? Gosh, that's a really good question. I know I totally um, put you on the spot. I'm so I know, sorry. I love it though. Um, the one question is, what do you think our audience will need tomorrow? And mm. because I think it needs to be rooted in your audience. And it, I think it's a really easy question for them to answer today. But trying to understand what's going to happen tomorrow is where they can really dig into the data. They can really take a step back and think about uh, the current landscape, but also use some critical thinking to get to the next level. Um, And so, yeah, that would be my one question. What does our audience need tomorrow? That's so great. Um... Thank you so much for joining today. This is a new project that we're tackling and I've had a great time getting to work with you in this way. And I hope that folks listening have been able to take away a few things, um, even if it's just that now they're going to Google, um, what is it? Cozy Cottage Core? Cottage Core. Yeah, I'm I definitely think. Good. I mean, I don't want to send them on some weird Google like rabbit hole, but I think that's what it's called. I love it. Um, Thank you so much, Kristen, for joining us today. Um, You heard it here. Social is a superpower. So click the subscribe button and turn on post notifications for more tips on how to increase your impact year round. Thank you, Kristen. And thanks to everyone for listening. Bye. Thank you.